Hey Walter here. Do you ever uh, do you have any any friends who are like really really good at picking the wrong the wrong <laughs> the wrong type of partner like the wrong husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend? And you think, oh man, you know he picked another dud or she picked another bad one or whatever. If you've ever had that situation, you know how it can feel like. You know that y- maybe you've told them, maybe you've, you've you've said, look, you know this is this person may not be the best for you. And sometimes people just don't want to listen. And sometimes they have to learn on their own. And that's really why I use the open position ratios. A lot of people email me and say, hey, what doesn't make sense. Why would you go against the crowd? So I want to explain three reasons why you would go against the crowd, so to speak. First of all, number one is we're not necessarily going against the entire market. If you consider the fact that the retail forex traders make up about maybe 3% of the market. I think that's actually being very generous, but let's just say that it used to be 1%, then I heard it went to 2. It, it maybe it's 3 now, but I, I, I doubt it. It could be probably is less than that. But if we've got 3% of the market, then that means 97% of the market is moved essentially by corporations, banks, and uh, essentially funds, hedge funds. So most of, and most of it really is banks and banks are moving money on behalf of corporations so for example example to, uh, toyota has to move a bunch of yen out of tokyo in, into uh, euros to london then they would they would do that and they might do it in tranches they might not, not do it all at once and their bank would help them run that transaction so most of the movements the strong movements happen uh, because of the volume that comes in, not from retail traders. So retail traders do not move the market per se. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is we know what retail traders do. It's actually no secret. So <laughs> I'll put this link for you in below, below this video. But we know from data, and actually you can look at the open position ratio data and see how it, it changes. By the way, if you, if you want to learn how to use this uh, open position ratio data to uh, take trades and to find uh, good trade setups. Um, I would absolutely love to share this with you and you can follow along and see how I do this in my own trades where I, we're taking a little tiny account and we're growing it up to a hundred grand. It's a thousand dollar account. We're going to grow it to a hundred grand over 300 trades and you can click the link below this video to get more information about that. So you can join us if you'd like. Now, Essentially, what we're saying is that because most traders make the wrong, the, the big mistake here, this is the big mistake, by the way. The big mistake here, uh, 43 million trades from FXCM. You've probably heard of X, FXCM, the brokerage. I don't even know if they're around anymore. But what happens is most retail traders have a better than 50% win rate. So they win here, the blue. Everything over this 50% is higher than 50. So, you know. Maybe there's a 63% win rate on the Euro Aussie or a, um, on the pound yen. It's a, looks like it's about a 62% win rate, something like that. The problem is not in the win rate. The problem is the focus on the win rate and the fact that the winning trades, for example, on the yen here, it looks like the average winning trade is about, what, 48 pips? And the average losing trade is 70 pips on the yen. So even though these traders win more often than they lose because they have a whatever this is 56 percent win rate on the yen and because they have 70 pip losers and 48 pip winners that's a losing strategy so we know that they're taking very small profits and uh, very big lo- losses and if you look at the open position ratios what you'll notice is that they're taking these these setups against the trend so that's the call. Is and, and if you think back to when you first started trading, that's what I used to do. I used to find a really strong trend and try and pick the turning point because I knew that if I could find the turning point of that trend, I could make a lot of money. And so let's take a look at this pair. This is the, the Aussie yen 12-hour chart. What's it doing right now? It's actually going down, right? And if we look at the open position ratios, it's pretty clear that what's happening here on the Aussie yen is that 81% of our traders are buying. So that's sort of point number two, is that by looking at what the majority of our retail trading buddies are doing, those are the traders that we need to make money from. 
These are the traders that we have to outwit, outsmart, whatever, out execute to make money. These are the traders that will lose and we will take those losings, their losses turn into our wins, right? So if we're doing the opposite of what most of them are doing, most of these traders are right now buying, 81% of the traders are buying Aussie yen. And if I look at the chart, it's going down. So I am going to assume that this Aussie yen trend will continue. Now, of course, I'm not going to just look at the numbers and say, yeah, I'm going to sell or whatever. Um, here's another one. This is the euro pound. Uh, I still want a, a naked forex pattern to get me into a trade, but I'm using the open position ratios, in this case on the euro pound, where is the euro pound? Right here. 81% of the traders on the euro pound are actually selling. So that means I want to be in the 19% of the traders who are actually going long, buying, and going with the trend here. And I'm actually in a little trade right now. This is a from the account. Um, see, currently it's it's sitting on $168.46 of open profits, but those haven't been closed yet, so they don't really mean anything. So that's essentially how this works. And now the third thing I want to share with you is that you can actually tell when there's a pullback. And the way that you can tell when there's a pullback at, versus uh, the co complete collapse of the trend, this is actually really cool if you if you grasp this concept, is let's say that the euro pound falls in over the next couple of days and it goes down. What we would expect to see is we would probably expect this to see this number come down from 81, maybe to like 75 or 76 or 74, somewhere around there. And the reason why is it, why would it do that? The reason why is because if the euro, this is the four hour euro pound, by the way, if the euro pound starts falling, what are these traders doing? Remember, what, what did we say they were doing? Well, they were trying to find the end of the trend. They're trying to, to pick the point where the trend is over, but they don't get the trend. They don't get a big move. They get these small little winners here, as we can see by the blue uh, line on the histogram here. So all they can really do is if the if the euro pound falls over the next couple days, they just have a, a limited move down to make their their profits, right? And then as soon as it starts to re-engage and the trend starts to go up again, guess what they're going to do? They're going to get stopped out or they're going to um, start selling some more. And so what does that mean? Well, the number is going to hop back up. So I don't use this number as a, as a okay, it's, you know, it's over 70%. It's time to start going in on the trade. What I use it as is a, is a strength of trend. So I still need to have kangaroo tails, big shadows, moolahs, whammies, all of the patterns that I talk about in the Naked Forks book. But what I'm trying to do by using these numbers is to augment that. And what I found is that typically you get about a five or 6% bump in win rate by using these. So um, for example, if I just trade straight trend trading, I might get on average about a 37% win rate. And then as soon as I start adding this element, and the reason why I know that is if I go back in Forex Tester and I test my trend trading strategies, it's about 37% pretty much consistently across currency pairs and all that. But as soon as I start adding these data in on my live trades, what happens is it, it jumps over 40, and it's usually around 43%, 42%. So it, it's about a 5 or 6% bump on, on win rate just by filtering out the very best trades by looking and seeing, well, wh what's everyone doing right now? So you can see right now I want to be selling the Aussie Cat, Aussie, Aussie Kiwi, Aussie Swiss, Aussie Yen, Aussie Singapore, and then uh, certainly buying the Euro Pound, Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi if we get good setups. We don't have good setups right now on the Euro Aussie and Euro Kiwi on the charts, but certainly on the Euro Pound there is. And then I want to sell Pound, Pound Yen, Pound Swiss, which which I am, which I am, by the way. But So here's the Pound Yen, or sorry, the Euro Pound. And then the pound Swiss is another one here. Again, what we're doing is we're selling. Uh, this, by the way, is an excellent formation. It's called a squeeze play where the market's being pushed down by the by the, um, the trend line, and it's stuck on that horizontal support level, and it finally pops and goes lower like it did there. So this is pretty simple stuff. It's not very difficult. If you'd like to follow along and watch us as we build the small account, uh, in the course, in the small account Big Profits course, you can click the link below this video and get more information. I hope that this helps. I wish you happy trading, and we will see you in another video. Bye.